everyone, it's Jessica Dibzinski and it is time for another mystery envelope challenge with my friends in the Makers with Heart group. This month's envelope came from Amanda and she has sent us a couple of stamped images here. We've got some frazzled looking critters as well as a few leaves from, from an older die cut set and the sentiments that came from that stamp set. So things like, it's kind of been a day, a week, a year, maybe chocolate will help. In her rules for this month, she says that we don't have to use the images that she has sent, but what she does want us to do that she requires is that we show shading or coloring on a stamped image. So I actually have pulled the stamp set here called Here We Go Again. I haven't played with it a whole lot yet and I really want to. The sentiments and the animals on it remind me a lot of the ones that she sent in the envelope. I also wanna use this brand new stamp set that is coming out September 1st and it's got a lot of really fun background images to it. So that is what I am going to do. Now here is the first card that I'm gonna be making but stay tuned because I have a second one to show you as well. So for my card design, I am actually using one of the patterns in the brand new Make It From Your Heart Volume 6 book, which will be available on September 1st. And it really was such a simple design to use because it involved a bunch of little pieces of paper that were cut to three quarters of an inch. And they are all the same length except for the two that go in the middle. So with six little pieces of paper or scraps, there you go, you've got this card design. So I'm really excited about that. I'm using three different colors of cardstock and I'm just alternating what side they're on so that I can show both the light side and the dark side of the cardstock. Now this white rectangle here is gonna be where my sentiment goes. I wanna make it stand out just a little bit. So I'm using a little piece of sponge and some glacier ink just to ink around the edge of it. And then once I've done that, I am going to pounce my sponge over the top. Um, I'm not really rubbing or going in a circular motion or anything. I'm just doing some pouncing and it leaves a really cool look to it. Now for my strips of cardstock, I want to do a little something to those as well. So I've got my little um, sanding disc here on the edge of my foam tool. And just like you would with a piece of foam and ink, I'm rubbing it across the end of that to remove the color from the cardstock and it reveals the white core. I love the way that looks. It definitely makes a bit of a dusty mess. So I'm going to have to pause here and clean up a little bit. All right, so I wanna make sure that I am following Amanda's rules um, from this envelope. And she really wanted us to showcase coloring in a stamped image. So I went ahead and I stamped this grumpy looking bear in some intense black ink. I let it sit for a while so that way the ink was nice and dry. And then I am using the red brown color um, of my tri-blend marker to go through and color him in. Now, one thing that I have noticed when you have a larger image like this to color in, it can make some of that blending and shading a little bit trickier. So I want the majority of my bear to be the middle tone of that marker. So I'm just going to start on his foot and do some little circular motions and just very slowly kind of color him in, um, moving from the corner all the way up his body, going as quickly as I can because the marker color will blend a little bit better while it is still wet on your paper. So if you kind of stop and come back to it or take a long time, you'll definitely see some of those lines or marks. Um, so I was just trying to move quickly. Then once I was almost done, I came into the center of his face with the lighter end of the marker color. And then now I'm just gonna go in and do a little bit of shading with the dark side of the marker. So around his feet and like where he is sitting, um, I'm just gonna add like a tiny bit of darker brown here. Um, and then in order to blend that out, you really just have to go to a lighter shade on the marker. So you could use the lightest end, um, or I'm actually gonna come back over with the middle shade uh, just because I want my bear to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna kind of color back over that to help blend those two different tones in. And again, working kind of quickly here to make sure that my ink is wet so that it can mix together as well as possible. And then here on his face, um, because it is small enough, I'm just going over the whole thing with the lightest end of the marker to blend it all together. It's still wet, but as it dries back, you'll see that some of that blending looks a little bit better. All right, now a little trick for you. Um, if you are like me and sometimes color outside the lines a little bit, like it's kindergarten, you can grab a white jelly pen and use it like a fine tip whiteout. Yeah, so I just kind of went over the parts that I went over the lines and covered them up and you'll never be able to tell. 
I'm gonna do a few finishing touches on his ears and his tie. And then I'm using the same white gel pen just to kind of make the collar of his tie or of his shirt pop a little bit and make it a really bright white. Okay, so now that my bear is all colored, I am gonna grab the coordinating dies that come with the stamp set and use some washi tape to cut him out. When I do a colored piece, I do like to color it first on the larger size paper, then do my die cutting. Um, it's just preference. I find it a little bit easier to hold on to if um, I haven't die cut it first, but you could certainly do it in a different order or whatever works for you. So there he is and he is ready to go. So I'm gonna kind of clear some stuff off here and start assembling this card. Um, I really love this design. Again, this is from that Make It From Your Heart Volume 6 six, which is going to be available on September 1st. Um, I found it really easy to do this quickly with my T-square ruler. Um, the measurements in the pattern book just tell you where to go from the top of fold of the card. So I just did that, lined things up with the marks on the ruler to make sure that all six pieces went down evenly spaced. It was a dream. I didn't have to do any math and you know try to eyeball things and make them evenly spaced. It was just so simple using that T-square ruler and the lines on it to make it work. I'll finish putting all of these pieces down and then I will stamp my sentiment on that white piece of cardstock and then I'll put the spare down so that he's kind of overlapping both of those. And this card is very nearly done. Like I said, what a great design for using little bits of scrap paper um, and having room for a sentiment and an image as well. Just to decorate it a little bit, I am using some silver stickles and adding some embellishments around it. Um, I forgot that I was gonna come back in with my white gel pen and add some marks to that cardstock. So I'll do that at the end once those stickles have dried. Okay, so here is the second card that I'm going to make. Exact same design, only I'm going to step it up just a little bit. Um, I really loved the clean lines and looks of the first card, but I thought, hmm, what if I added a little bit more texture and stamping to everything? So this time I'm gonna use the grumpy looking cat, and I thought, you know what, he needs a pair of glasses, and there are some on that stamp set. So very easy to do with that clear acrylic block. I was able to stamp the glasses onto the grumpy cat. I'm gonna add some stamping to those strips of cardstock too. So that same stamp set right there that I showed you at the beginning of the video, there are a bunch of different like background texture type of stamps. I'm going to use the one that has the lines on it and then there's another one that has a bunch of scattered dots. So I use the line one just to go over uh, the light side of all of the card stocks and then I use the dots to go over all of the dark side of the card stocks. And it's just alternating the patterns. That way when I put them together, it'll go line dots, line dots, and that was a lot of fun. Um, as far as the card base itself, I masked off the back side of the card and I grabbed another stamp from that stamp set. It looks like a crackle kind of cement look sort of. And I used some um, mink ink, uh, there's a tongue twister, <laughs> some mink ink to randomly stamp over my card base. So for both the cat and then also the bear on the other card, I did stack up my die cuts so that both of the animals are four pieces of cardstock thick. It is my new favorite trick. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that's what I've really been into. Um, I'm loving that as an option as opposed to foam tape just because it's a little bit more solid and I don't go through as much foam tape that way. All right, now for coloring in my little grumpy cat here, um, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, which is just kind of go over the entire image first with the color that I want it to be. Then I thought, you know what, a fun thing to do for him, because he's got those glasses on, um, I'm imagining that the look of his fur is maybe a little bit lighter coming through the lenses of the glasses. So I use the lightest shade of my marker to color in the glasses part. Then I turned to the darkest shade of the marker to put a few lines on him. So I'm giving him um, like a tiger striped tail and then I'll also give him a couple of marks going down his back just to make him, um, I don't know, a little bit more cat-like and so that was a lot of fun. And because this marker is the same color but just varying shades of it, it was very easy to do this and make it look very natural. I just went back over it to blend all of that in and there you can see him. I think even though he's grumpy looking, he is so cute. Okay, using the sentiments from that stamp set, 
Um, I'm going to do Monday already. Uh, sometimes it feels that way, right? Like really, it's already Monday again. Um, and like I said, I went with this stamp set because it was one that I had had uh, sitting there waiting to be played with. And Amanda did say in her envelope that she really wanted us to focus on a stamp set. Um, and I thought, okay, I can do that. Um, it felt a very similar sort of vibe to the one that she sent in the envelope. I'm gonna be honest, I felt a little worried that I didn't use any of the actual pieces from the envelope in my project, and I've never done that before for a mystery envelope, but I'm fairly certain, like maybe 80% certain, maybe 90, that I did read the directions in her envelope correctly, and that she said we didn't have to use the things that she sent, but instead focus on shading or coloring in a stamped image, and then also just that emphasis on a stamp set. I did both of those things, so I hope I hope I did it correctly, but either way, I'm super happy with the cards that I have made, and I can't wait to see what my friends in the Makers with Heart group have done with that same envelope and the pieces and the rules. I'm wondering if anybody else read it the way that I did, or if they all created something with those frazzled looking critters who are also just as cute as the cat and the bear. All right, I will leave these links to their videos um, in the description box down below. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Happy crafting. Bye.